Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. Now because there's a crossover coming up in Ecto Kid, we have to go through some Saint Sinner issues. Uh, they're part of the Clive Barker universe as well, from the Razor line of Marvel. Now, the fifth issue, I believe it is, of Ecto Kid is part two, or part one, of a two-part crossover with Saint Sinner. So, we're going to go through these and see what's up. Well, we've got a foil embossed cover, which is from the 90s. It's um, It looks really cool, but it's usually a sign of low-end interiors. As we learned with Ecto Kid, I can be wrong on that. This time, not so much. This is kind of terrible, honestly. Now, it's written by Elaine Lee. Uh, Max Douglas is the artist. Christine Shields is the colorist. Mark McLaren, editor. Malcolm Smith, consulting editor. Carol Potts, executive editor. And Tom DeFalco, editor-in-chief. So we start out with a guy running through the streets, grabbing his head, jumps in the water, and he's hearing voices. And then we got the intro there. It says Tale of the Barkerverse. And we learn that the main character is actually only 16 years old. But if you look at the art, he looks like he's about 35. And that's because the art style is these heavy, thick lines. And it makes it have kind of a distorted perception of what's going on doesn't help that everybody has long hair so it's kind of hard to get a, a good look at the facial structure but there's a lot of ambiguity and ages i had a hard time like telling a few of the characters apart at times yeah we're following this kid around and he's talking about you know going down in the sewers with his friends and there's a voice in his head oh his name is philip fetter Better, by the way and one of the voice tells him that his friends got a nice jacket and he should have a jacket like that so he murders his friends and then he sees some cheerleaders and the voice tells him he should have one of those and then there's a cheerleader in a dumpster and the only thing he manages to resist is hearing the voice tell him to kill his mom and he doesn't he drops the knife and runs and then tries to kill himself by jumping in the water but he's pulled out by a black lady who tries to give him cpr and then he strangles her to death and absorbs her soul and her soul is angelic and keeps the demon at bay and i'm not clear on whether he's schizophrenic or not obviously as we go we learn that he's not completely crazy but he's in some extra dimensional place now where he's tied up with some other beings and the dialogue is pretty atrocious. Um, the parts where he's talking to like the angel and the demon, that's actually fairly interesting. The concepts are really good, but it's a poor execution in my opinion. So anyway, he's in this prison and he breaks free somehow. It's very like, you know how? Oh, okay. So uh, he just touches stuff and he's free. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So him and these other prisoners that he just somehow frees open a doorway to some place called the Amen. And I'm quoting here, the place where all prayers come to an end and none are answered. And somehow he leads these people through there before these creatures called the Smiths can get them. And he somehow teleports everybody back to the sewer. And then he s shuts the portal uh, on a few of them. And it's just him and like two or three, uh, or three I guess, other creatures. And they're back at the crime scene where these like 1940s style detectives are looking at uh, the dead lady. And she's wearing a medallion for the Saint Sinner. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a drunk guy who's like a stereotypical rummy from a 40s movie. <sighs> and it, it kind of ends there with the cops busting him sort of. I don't know, it's, it's, it's not a very good issue. I don't like the art. I think it's... It's an interesting art style, but it doesn't really work well with the story they're trying to tell, I don't think. And the fact that I, I think the artist wasn't quite ready for mainstream work. It's got more of an indie feel to it, or at least like a slightly untrained feel. It, it's, it looks more like an independent book, something you would find, you know, for a slightly inflated price from a publisher you've never heard of. So I, I can't recommend this one. It was just... It was almost painful to read. It gave me a little bit of a headache. It's not exactly clear what's going on. How his powers work is completely ambiguous. Ambiguous. I can't talk. It's so bad. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like it. I thought the character was older too. Like he looks like a guy in his 30s. And I guess he's only supposed to be 16 or something. Maybe 
it said something about stealing nine years so maybe he aged somehow i don't know it's not real clear i don't think the creative team was the right choice for this book from what i can tell the concept is fairly interesting about somebody that's warring with voices in his head like a, a corrupted shazam kind of thing but it's just not executed very well and the creatures all look pretty disturbing so there there's that like having that charcoal style with the monster and the angel okay yeah that would have worked and then have like a regular style for the main character so you can kind of differentiate between what's in his head and what's not a little better and it's it is kind of interesting how they have like different caption boxes and styles for the angel and demon the angel has more of an old english and the demon has like an um a serial killer's ransom letter sort of thing and if they had done something like that i probably would have liked it better but no this one really didn't do it for me so we're gonna have to power through and hope issue two is better so we'll look at that in, in another episode until then as always thanks for listening and we hope to see you on the next episode